Hi guys, Bruce here. I got you way up there today. I put you guys on a pedestal. Oop, right there. So, most of you know what this is. Came off of a Honda G160 horizontal. But it'll fit uh, any Honda GX160. The problem is, the guy who owns it, it's only got this much rope on it, and it only has this much spring left. So, when it was on the engine, he, he, he could coax it a little bit, and then he only had one revolution to yank it to get it to work. So we're going to fix that today. Uh, and I've been looking at this one. It's the right size cord. I use, I got some out, I use this stuff. It may be a tiny bit thicker, but that's okay. And on the Honda, they, sometimes they do this loop-de-doo on the on the inside, basically it's a slip knot. It's a slip knot that uh, I just use a single one because my rope's just a tiny bit thicker too. So let's just cut that off. We're going to replace this and repair it today. There's a couple of things wrong. The rope's too short. There's not enough winds in the rope, which always happens when you have to cut the knot off when the rope breaks, right? And then when you feed a new one in, like this guy did, he fed a pretty new one in. He didn't know how to wind five or six spring winds onto the rewind. So it's got a broken handle. And the rope's too short. Now in these, right here, that's where the, that is exactly right there. See where my screwdriver is? That is where the rope goes through. So we'll do that. And we can do it from either one. But let's put five or six winds on this spring. We'll see how it feels. Where's my hole? Right there. One, two, three, four, five. Is that gonna do it? Let's just see. I don't wanna go overboard, right? We'll just feed that through there. You can do this both ways, right? So now I'm feeding that rope into that hole. Right there. Right there. Do you see where my finger is? And um, we're going to feed it through. To the second layer of the plastic. Now it's fed through the second layer of the plastic. Do you see that right there? And now it's going to go through the little metal rope retainer. And I'm going to grab it with my needle nose pliers. Oop. There, right like that. You don't have to sit here and hold it. For your dear life, you can you can do something like this. You can stick a screwdriver in there to hold it. <clears throat> like that. And I did tie, already tie a knot in this one, on, in the bottom, right? So it, it's, and then you can tuck it into that little pouch pocket hole, who dicker. Right like that. Because <laughs> you don't want it to interfere. All right. Now it's it's being held there. So this is how simple this is, guys. Now we need a, a new pull rope. A pull. A pull. Let me get my lighter. Okay, so now we fed that through there. Now I got a little trick. This is for you, John. If you, if you have a little washer that's the same size as the base of... Let's just set that there so I can lose it. The base inside there. So you push this through 
like that. All right? And I'll cut this off the same length as my lawnmower, just about seven feet. Excuse me. And then I put the washer on here. And that just provides a backing on the knot. And let's just do the knot. Okay? got five lines on that spring. We may have to add one more. Let me squeeze that in my vise. Give it a little pull and a nudge and a pull and a nudge and a pull so you don't have too much tail on there. Whoops! Drop my watch! That's why you put the screwdriver through there to hold it. <laughs> Good, see that? That just tucks in there nice like that. With the washer tucked in washer on the knot and pull in. Now we'll see if we have any floppiness left on the rewind. So we take this, we unplug the, the screwdriver and we we'll let, let it go. So, now, it's a tough one because the rope's a little long for a single engine, like, or for a horizontal engine that doesn't drive a lawnmower. And it's actually, if it was on a lawnmower, you'd be okay because you're going to start with about that much before you put the, the rope on the rope retainer on the handlebar. So you'll start from there. So I think that's good. Now, if I was going to put another loop in there, some guys, if I was going to put another uh, spring loop of tension, some guys cut a little groove in there. But this is what you can do instead of doing that. You can get a little bit of slack, and usually there's enough slack to run the rope around. So we're going to stick another, let's just do it. We're going to stick another uh, rotation of tension on the spring. So we get a little bit of slack and we come this way like that and now that should suck right up there tight. See that? And I'll leave it there. And that's all there is to it. If there's nothing wrong with the uh, with the pull rope itself, with the rewind itself, that's all you got to do. You have a good handle seven feet of rope. Let's just measure that for fun, right? I, I just guess, to be honest with you, I think it's about six inches less than seven feet. Okay. Hey, we might as well use our brain, eh? Pull all the way out. Let's just have a look. Doesn't feel like seven feet. You know how you got just got a feeling. It is six feet exactly. Okay, so that might not be a long enough rope for a lawnmower, but it might be. For me, it's no big deal. I'll just change it out, right? There you go. So that was what, you know, it, that, I, li I like to help the, to get the handy guy out that's at home and he, he hasn't been working on small engines for 10 years and rope pull breaks or the rope breaks and he goes, oh no, and then you end up with that little one revolution pull thing. So I like to help out the guy who, who knows how to do things, but he's not an expert. That's the kind of video that I make for, for the guy who, uh, this is the family man who's going to go fix the lawnmower. And he comes into the house and he goes, I fixed it! Yeah, that's what I like. Thanks, guys. Hi, guys. Bruce here. So what's new in my little world? I'm going to set you up. Just wait a minute. Uh, 
Well, we're going to go back a little bit in time. Klaus sent me one of these from Hobby Motor. And I thought it was smoke and mirrors, right? So I took my two old batteries, batteries. One is still over there behind that little baby blue one. It's a tractor battery, right? You with me? Go back down over here. Come out. Okay, I won't move the camera anymore. And I did just what Klaus told me. I used it the first time and I wasn't impressed, but he said, no, put it on there until it drains the battery to the point where you get your low battery alarm or low something, right? And then I charge those batteries back up with my charger. And those two batteries, one is 12 years old and the other one is nine years old. And I just took my bigger of the two for the for the uh, twin cylinder John Deere LX178 made in 1996 and that it I ran the, ran the tractor dry last year and I put that battery in there and I was watching the clear fuel filter and I had to turn it over for 20 or 30 seconds and if it's a bad battery it won't do that and as soon as the gas hit the filter whoom, I wish she started and that's on a 12 or 13 year old battery for uh, agricultural gardening battery and you know how badly those things are abused okay next thing this is just kind of what's new in my life this crazy thing swig tool swager tool mostly I use it for these little splices on lawnmower stop cables instead of smashing them on the on the uh, anvil like I used to do. Works great. I'm getting ready for this year. I've ordered some more NGK spark plugs. BPR 6ES. The 5ESs are harder to buy. They come with the machine. I've got some more here. I've ordered some uh, uh, BR2LM which are the same as the J19LM uh, spark plugs to get me going. Maybe down a little bit. Here. Last fall I had to uh, repair a spark stripped out spark plug hole and I only kit this kit this kit only came with three of the inserts. They're not heli coils but they're similar. So I bought a package of six. There's two of each different length in here. And uh, they are handy. And I only bought them because it's life is awful when you need something and you don't have it. Now, Jim Yeski, I've been having a lot of questions on these. Jim Yeski built, made me two of these. One is the oil drain. You know on the new lawnmowers, you can't tilt them, you can't drain them from underneath anymore for oil. You have to drain them from the fill spout. Well, this one is for Briggs and Stratton, and he made these. It's got a stop. So you turn this, right, hook it up to the lawnmower, you tilt the lawnmower on its side, and you open this into the disposal pan that you're using. And I've got one for Briggs and Stratton and one for Honda. He makes these, I don't. His name is Jim Yeski. Isn't that cool? We're going to move a little further down. So I was doing, I've had a couple of uh, steel repair, oops. I've had a couple of steel repair jobs. I've got three of these DeWalt impacts. They're great for small engines. I don't know how useful they would be for a, uh, you know, semi-truck or something. But I bought, a, I bought two, uh, two, two things regarded with Torx. I bought a set of long Torx that fit into this and many other quarter inch drivers. And, it's, and of course it came with the others too, but I was mostly interested in the T27 because steel, most of the fasteners on a steel are T27. And then I bought the screwdriver too, because before that 
I was fiddling around with this thing, right? And as well, this. But that's not quite enough, right? So now I'm there. Moving on. I bought two. I've had these before. I wore them out. Two lights. These are what these ones have the tilt and the magnet attachment. So you can attach it on the side of something. You know, you know what I mean, right? And uh, they have three adjustments. So they're really nice. You got a hook on the bottom, you can hang them up. I bought this one by mistake. It's actually got a great light in it, but it doesn't have the tilting, the tilting uh, LED portion. I find this much more useful. I still use this one, but when I need to get right in there and then get my camera in on a carburetor inlet or something like that, there you are. And then I was, what was I doing? I was doing, uh, oh, I was just working on that hose. I have to show you that. And I ran out of white Teflon tape. So I bought 10 of those. And then I've updated my filters. I've got 10 of each filter now for the major mowers. And then I've still got some stuff for the minor ones, right? I got uh, the big Tecumseh filters, the Honda filter. I think this one's for a Wing Wang Honda power mower engine. This one might be a a wing wing as well. But anyway, I got the majors. The Briggs and Stratton and Honda, the Kohler squares, and the Tecumseh round. I've updated that. And then, over here, I don't know what uh, Hank thinks of this, but this thing is fantastic. Uh, I have two of them. This one, I have an outlet right underneath my bench. The old one was leaking, it was driving me nuts. And, uh, but I have, it's not for, I know you lose pressure through that thing. Uh, not pressure, volume. As soon as you close the, as soon as you close, the pressure goes back up to whatever the com compressor is running at. But when you're, when you're, when you got a little something and you want to blow the dirt off or whatever, whoop, I use that all the time. It's called air washing. And I've got another cheap one on my tank on my on my compressor. So, so that's kind of what I've been up to, guys. Just to get ready for the season. And I tell you, it's been a slow start to the season. So thanks for watching this. It was fun. One more thing. Thanks to Ken for that swag tool, SWAG. And uh, uh, also, I forgot to mention, I have lots of, lots and lots of uh, quarter inch and three eighths shear pins, but I bought these two for Alfred's snowblower. And I got eight left. I, I ordered a package of 10. And I checked at the department stores and the ones from Amazon are identical. Thank you. Alright guys, Bruce here. Well, my life is complete now. I got some stickers from Top Conquer. And a nice note. It says, Hi Bruce, just a couple of stickers for your wall of shame. Hope you and your family are well and enjoying the snow free time. Always enjoy your videos and your sense of humor and look forward to many more of them both. Take care mate. And his name is Phil. So he, he's been doing a, a, a live stream on Saturday mornings. Just uh, go, to top, go to Top Conquer and you'll find him. So let's get him up there. On my wall. I've got to get a, I just got to get a rag. What kind of rag? I need a, what kind of rag? What kind of rag? I think we're going to get a, a white one. All I do is, this is an aluminum wall here. Right. And we're gonna stick them up beside Luke. Start a new row. 
And I'm going to put them both up there, Phil. Look what that aluminium does, right? I came, I saw, I conquered. I don't usually put them both up, but Phil's kind of a special guy. He's just a good man. And another one right below it. Whoop. That's not the wall of shame, Phil. That's the wall of fame. Can I fix you in there? Yes. There we go. Thanks, Phil.